of the, the biggest ones are obviously um, that locus of control is, is you know, you, you can't. There's certain things you just can't affect or implement or change. Mm. You can only focus on the things that you can control. So joining me on the line today, I've got Ben Hirons from Due North. Welcome to the call, Ben. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me, David. Uh, pleasure. Maybe tell us a bit about Due North. Uh, yeah, look, Due North is a boutique digital marketing agency. Um, we've got a real sweet spot for, for search marketing is our, is our real expertise. So websites, content, uh, Google Ads, SEO. So really, you know, and how do you drive more uh, results in business out of your website? Um, and by boutique, um, look, we really only ever work with sort of between 22 and 25 clients. Um, so we have no interest in being too big or too small. We find that's a real sweet spot that's really good for the team and, and, and good for us as, as a business. Yeah, fantastic. So tell me a bit about what the, the sort of lockdown or COVID has sort of done to impact your business. It's been a really interesting ride. Um, I, think, I think everybody's sort of saying that. Um, first two weeks, we took a massive hit. Revenue dropped by about 60% in, uh, in like two weeks. So just, I think everybody chat themselves for want of a better word um and and marketing is one of the first things to get pause or cut so it was um it was a real uh, eye opener for time lots of panic lots of obviously letting staff go or reducing hours and pausing things and all that sort of jazz but sort of after that it's calmed down really quickly which has been great so um we sort of bounced back quite nicely still still down a little bit um but but it's also, you know, there's, there's only things you can control and you've got to work on those things. Yeah, and I suppose fear and unknowns cause people to sort of uh, put the brakes on things. Um, but ironically, digital media has become sort of more consumed than ever. And Correct. I think people are starting to realise that there's this pretty much a permanent change that's going to occur, which is online shopping and uh, people staring at a screen a lot longer every day, huh? Yep, uh, absolutely. And look, I think it's one of the really interesting things we'll be to see how and if they can adapt. So I've got, uh, I've got, I'm not sure if it's a fear is the right word, but there's that concept of the, the boats left. Um, and so if people haven't been doing digital prior to now, you're playing catch up and it's a really hard game to play catch up on. So um, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how those that haven't been in the space before um, take up that challenge. I think there's a there's a, a school of thought that things are going to go back to normal, and then there's the reality, which is it ain't going to go back to normal. So. Nope. Even nope. though the boat might have left, you can still jump off the pier and swim profusely and try and catch it. <laughs> Correct. And, and blow a lot of money doing it <laughs> yeah. and time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So tell me about the opportunities you see for small business right now. Oh, look, uh, coming back to, I think you comment before about things changing so much. Look, at yeah. the same time in our book, things all, it's also things stay the same. Obviously, mm -hmm. the operating environment is different, but the, the opportunities, the ability to add value, um, certainly a, a, a more prolific, prolific, today than, than that's not even the right word is it but you know what i mean than they, are, they ever have been i mean i've just i've just started doing um a public speaking course and it's okay. actually based based out of a guy that i met through a business owners group but he's based in south africa so half the guys are south african on the call but he's now saying that um his business has exploded um because he's gone international it hasn't needed to travel people are happy to you to meet you anywhere um so it's awesome that shift that whilst things have your own market may have shrunk because you can't see them or you can't get out and about. All of a sudden, the global market has become on your doorstep. And it's yeah. kind of always been there, but it's that reality that's hit home is, you know what, you can help somebody in Canada tomorrow if you really want to versus, you know, a guy in Brighton still in lockdown, I can't speak to him, Let, let's put our head in the sand. It's, um, yeah. well, there's it's amazing opportunities. change, isn't it? So even yeah. like yeah. the guys in Canada, the guys in South Africa, they've all experienced the same change. Correct. Uh, Correct. It's like uh, someone's sort of throwing all the cards in the air and they have to reshuffle the deck. Um, yep. Same number of cards, the same number of people on the planet, same yep. number of suppliers. It's now that uh, instead of having only local, everyone's got this global access, yeah? Correct. Correct. And it's, um, and it, what's really interesting is I think that uh, at our core human beings have the same need, the same want, right? And, and ultimately that's what your business is there is to fulfill what's that pain or the need or the want. And now you can do it anywhere, anytime, anyhow. And I think yeah. once again, coming back to pro COVID, you actually could do that, but it just, it wasn't on your mind. It wasn't front of mind. It wasn't seen as an opportunity. Um, so it's, uh, I think to that extent, it's been a, a great eye opener for a lot of people. No, we, we've been doing webinars for nearly 15 years and it's always been the poor cousin to a live event. And we ran them yep. because they, they had a global reach and they were low cost. And now we've been able to just switch places and say, actually they're the flagship product because yes. now people are depending on them where before it was like, well, if I can't make it, can I at least sort of, you know, jump online now as yep. well? 
I'm going to jump online because I can't make it. <laughs> yep, correct. And those are this. It was a great. Uh, it was a part of a. a uh, well, I wasn't a. It was a live live session, kind of like this, of a guy out of the US. But he goes, "It's the guys that double down in the tough times are the ones that come out booming the next three to five years." Yeah. Um, and, I, and I've been trying to share that with a lot of people. Is you, you should be doubling down. You know what you believe in and what you're great at is double down on it, invest heavily in it, because in three, six, nine, twelve months, you, it's just going to boom as a result of it. Yeah, and the, and, the, and the sort of the shifting of the tides is a sort of opportunistic time for people to switch. Um, you know, some people call it pivoting. I just call it adapting, right? <laughs> oh, just finding out exactly what your target audience really want is what I call it. <laughs> yeah, and listening because yeah. the, the, yep. the sort of desires are changing quite dramatically just over a short period of time. Correct. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So tell me a bit yep. about sort of what, what have you taken personally out of this whole event? Personal lessons. Um, I guess I think some of the, the biggest ones are obviously um, that locus of control is, is you know, you, you can't. There's certain things you just can't affect or implement or change. Mm. You can only focus on the things that you can control. Um, and that's everything from, I remember when we had to obviously start uh, reducing hours of staff and it's one of the most heartbreaking things you can do as, as a business owner is, but it's out of your control. So it's like, you know, you've got to be able to sleep at night and continue functioning yeah. based on, other people's inputs and control. So I think that fo making sure you focus on, on what you can control and, and not beating yourself up or letting the, the mental demons um, take control of you um, as a result of what you can't control. Um, and then it's, it's sort of back to that, the, the foundational principles of business and, and marketing stay the same. They, they don't change at all. So it's, you know, what that concept of, of the one who can add the most value uh, is, is going to win the game at the end of the day. Um, and, and obviously that's been a real take out is, you know, focus on how do you continue to add more value to your clients? How do you help them? How do you shape them? How do you help them grow their business? And, and ultimately you'll, you'll get the rewards accordingly down the track. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So Ben, let me ask you the best piece of business advice you've ever received. Um, uh, this is this is probably more learning the hard way, and I'm not sure if it just came from one person or, or multiple people. It's that concept of you know, it's not about you, Ben, um, and and I don't mean that from a selfish perspective. Like I'm yeah. certainly not a selfish guy, but um, business success is all about them. So it's all about your customer and what they want, and it's not what you think they want or what you'd like to see them have is. Um, and I, I continue to see this day in, day out is, and, and we've got competitors that are that in some people's eyes are supremely more successful than us. Mm -hmm. um, and they certainly don't have a better product and they certainly don't have a better track record, but what they've got is they have a ability to um, fulfill what the other person wants better than, than what most piece businesses can. And I think ultimately that's once again drives the, a lot of success is how well you know uh, that person at the end of the phone line or your customer or whoever it may be. Um, and yeah. I continually have to remind myself how important that is. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, people talk about McDonald's and most people that don't like to admit they go to McDonald's, right? Because the quality of the burgers and the quality of the food is pretty average to poor. Yep. But they still sell the most burgers on the planet. Yep. And you sort of think to yourself, how is that even possible that you can have an inferior product and still have the lion's share? And we're talking about 30 years consistently, even more, yep. Yep. You know, nearly 40 years of having this sort of volume. And it's literally that they don't sell burgers, they sell convenience. I was trying to explain that to my son the other day. He goes, he goes we saw, he saw Hungry Jacks. He's 12, so he's not, he's not a young packer, but he's, he's never eaten at Hungry Jacks. And he goes, Dad, why haven't we eaten at Hungry Jacks? And I'm going, hmm, good question, Tom. <laughs> but it's like Maccas have done so better, so much better than, than HJs have I had of this the past three to five to 10 years because of that yeah. very, very fact. It's, because it's they amazing. understand how, how to sort of uh, talk in benefits. And I think you're right as a marketer. I think your job is always to convert features to benefits and get into the conversation that's happening in the, in the prospect's mind. Well, that's it. It's, it is that emotional connection. So it's, and, and we, we, I try and beat it out of our customers heads. It's not about the features. It's actually not about the benefits because what happens is you're going to decide on an emotional level and then you're going to justify it with all the features and benefits that, that underpin it. But you need to get define what that emotion is first and, yeah. and then work through it from there. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So yeah. let me ask you, do you have a favorite book or a favorite author or a favorite uh, blogger that you follow? Uh, look, I've got a couple. Um, yeah. uh, well, I think, the book that's probably changed my life the most in the past 12 months uh, is called uh, Essentialism. Yep. Um, uh, and it really is all about doing less, but doing it better. And, um, and it was just, 
this really struck a chord with me is I've always been the guy, type of guy that's tried to do too many things for too many people um, versus, you know, I just the most important thing, uh, one or two things and just do it bloody well. Um, and you've got to get rid of all the bells and whistles and noise that, that underpin it. Um, you've got to get rid of people demanding your time. It's your time. You've got to drive your time and not let other people steal it. Mm. Um, it was just, it was a, an absolute groundbreaker for me in terms of prioritization, uh, in terms of getting things done, in terms of, you know, once again, I'm not selfish, but I'm actually more as important as, as my customers and the next person down the block. Um, so it was, um, it's a great book. Um, and look, and I love Seth Godin. Um, his, yep. his work is, is instrumental and in his latest book, this is marketing. Once again, is, is well worth the read in terms of a shift of how you see business and, and particularly as a business owner, what your role in the world is. And then he really talks about, you know what, um, your job as a business is about change. So what's the change that you want to make to people's lives and yep. whose life do you want to change? Um, and it, nice. it just becomes a really interesting thought process. Um, and I love, and Tim Ferriss, his podcast, I find really really thought provoking. Yeah. Um, just, well, he, he's like the body hacker, right? So he's always finding great sort of a, to try and improve his performance. But um, yep. it's interesting. Yep. So, so the two books you sort of described, I, I think often people get confused by the noise and the thread of today's conversation has been really COVID is just another event. Yep. And noise around it is potentially distracting because the fundamentals are the same. Spot on the mark. Yep. Yeah. yeah so yep. Just keeping that focus. Um, let me ask Correct. you the number one piece of advice you'd give to someone in business right now. Uh, can I give you two? <laughs> I've had a bit of thought about this. And look, I think it comes back to that, you know, double down on you and your business and your thoughts, you know, and it's, it's the best time to invest in it. It's the best time to cut all the crap out of your work. It's the best time to get rid of the C and D players, uh, the C and D and E customers, you know, get, just get rid of all that and just focus on, uh, the assets you need to grow your business. And, and our book, obviously marketing becomes one of those, those most important assets. Yeah. Um, and there was another, um, a little formula that I've, I've come across recently, um, once again, from a guy out of the US. Um, he sort of says success um, is equal to focus um, times belief times energy. Um, so it's actually so, and as a percentage. So focus is coming back to that essentialism concept. You know, how focused are you on yeah. just doing that one or two things? Um, yeah. Belief is belief in yourself and your business. Mm -hmm. And then obviously energy is, is how much time and, fo and and energy you're putting into that right and because it's a percentage when you multiply it if you yep. go 0.8 times 0 0.8 0 0.8 you end up at 0.5 something or other um and he's really saying you know you got to be at like 98 percent of all three of them yep. uh to succeed or to be guaranteed of chances of success and i just thought that was a, a great way of looking at it you know that's my to, to make my business super successful i've got to focus i've got to have belief and i've got to have energy and drive and yeah, it was um, yeah, a, a, a good way to look at it awesome Ben, fantastic chat. I know we could have chatted for hours, but I tried to catch you and grab you down to a, yes, the essentials, which we got. Yep. I uh, really appreciate your time today. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Cheers. Thanks.